Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and today once again I've got some latest and the very important question on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And yes, I know you're tired of the theory. So this is your chance to validate your understanding and prepare for the real exam with the real exam like questions. With all the questions, I will give you some AWS documentation, official documentation so that you can validate the answer and also do some self-study. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. And here is the very first question for today. So friends, are you ready? So let's get started with our very first question for today. Question number 216 part 28. My focus will be to present you real exam like questions. I mean, of course, we do that in all the episodes. But what will be special in these episodes is that we will not focus on any particular Amazon AWS concept, but we will take some random questions. And these questions will be very similar to the questions that really appears in the real exam. So in the real exam also, you will not get set of questions that focuses just on one concept you will get some mixed bag of questions from here or there and that's why it's very important that you understand all the concepts so that you can handle all these different varieties of questions so i hope you understood the theme of the episode we will be taking some real exam like questions in the way that appears in the real exam so let's read this question the question is saying you that a company plans to create a data lake that uses amazon s3 now for those who are new with the amazon Amazon S3 is basically Amazon simple storage service that you can use to store different varieties of data. And don't worry, we will understand all the nitty gritties, all the details of Amazon S3 in just a little while. So stay with me. Let's read the question further. It says which factors will have the most effect on the cost. So basically, the question is asking you that when you're using the Amazon S3, what will be the factors that will impact the cost the most? And your options are option A, the selection of S3 storage tiers, option B, charges to the transfer existing data into Amazon S3, option C, the addition of S3 bucket policies, and option D, S3 ingest fees for each request. So let me first give you the correct answer and then I will give you all the documentation to understand Amazon S3. And the correct answer is option A, the selection of S3 storage tiers. And friends, before we really understand what are the Amazon S3 storage tiers, it's important to understand exactly what is Amazon S3. So here you can read that Amazon S3 is an object storage service that offers industry leading scalability, data availability, security and performance. So let me explain this in very simple words. You can actually imagine Amazon S3 as a giant digital warehouse where you can find lot of shelves and bins. And now as a user, you store the data into these buckets, which are similar to the bins. And you can create a bucket with a unique name that stores the data within it. And you can put the files inside the bucket. So for example, if you want to store some website images, maybe you have some website and you want to store some images or some videos, then you can use Amazon S3 or maybe some mobile app data, maybe some backups, all of these can be stored into Amazon S3 and this offers you scalability and also optimized cost. And not just that, you can also understand all these use cases given here. You can also build a data lake, you can run cloud native applications, you can backup and restore critical data, and also you can use the Amazon S3 for archiving the data at the lowest cost. And to start with, you can see that we have Amazon S3 free tier also available, but let me jump to this documentation here that will give you all the knowledge about the Amazon S3 tiers. So here you can see, let me zoom it a little bit here. So here you can see that we have multiple Amazon S3 tiers. We have S3 standard, we have intelligent tiering, express one zone, standard 1A, and each of these storage tier, my friends, each of these has a different use case. So for example, if I have to tell you, let's go to this uh, glacier. So if I go to the Glacier one, you can see that Amazon Glacier is very suitable when you have to back up and archive the data, which is rarely accessed at a very low cost. And also you can observe that this storage type provides you with 99.99% of availability. And likewise, my friends, you can read the documentation on all such Amazon S3 tiers. And this Amazon S3 is an important concept and you will surely get some questions around the same. I will leave some more documentation in the description box. Now coming to the next question, question number 217 that says, which are the three pricing fundamentals of AWS cloud? Your options are option A, cloud storage and data transfer in the AWS cloud. Option B, 
cloud networking and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. Option C, compute storage and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. And option D, storage functions and data transfer in the AWS cloud. And please note very carefully all the options. This is a very important section here, which says in the cloud or out of the AWS cloud. So are you able to spot the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is option C, compute storage and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. And now let's validate our answer. So here you can read that these are the three fundamental drivers of the cost, Amazon compute, storage and outbound data transfer. And please relate this to the question. In the question, we were saying data transfer out of the AWS cloud, but this can be reworded as outbound data transfer. So both mean same. Do not get confused by the words. So here you can see that these characteristics vary somewhat depending upon the AWS product and the pricing model that you choose. And once again, just to reiterate, I want to focus on this line here that says that this charge appears on the monthly statement as AWS data transfer out. So please remember there is no cost for the data that comes inside the AWS cloud but there is always the cost for the data that goes out of the AWS cloud. So very important concept and with that let's jump on to the next question. Question number 218 that says which of the following options is not a point of consideration when choosing AWS region. Your options are A compliance with data governance, option B latency, option C capacity availability and option D pricing. And the correct answer is option C, capacity availability. And now you may ask why this is so. Because the capacity in AWS cloud is virtually unlimited. So you don't have to worry about the capacity in AWS cloud or beat any other cloud. So basically when you're using the on-premises, you're always worried about the capacity available in your servers. But when you're using the cloud and that's the beauty of cloud, you don't have to worry about the capacity. It's always available for you. And also let me give you one more fundamental concept around this capacity availability. So basically what should you consider when you're selecting a region for your workload? So there are some parameters based on which you should choose your region and those parameters are compliance, latency, cost, then you also have services and features. And it's very important to understand my friends that when you're choosing any region, you should always look for the services and the features that you will be requiring for your application or the solution. So not all the features, not all the solutions or the services are available in all the regions. And with that, we can jump on to the next question. Question number 219 says that which of the following is the definition of cloud computing? I'm sure that by now you all know the definition of cloud computing by heart. But let's revise our understanding. So the option A is rapidly develop, test and launch software application. Option B, automatic and quick ability to acquire resources as and when you need them and release the resources when you no longer need them. Then option C, on-demand availability of computer system resources, especially data storage or cloud storage and computing power without direct active management by the user. So basically we are talking about the self-service. And then option D, change resources types when needed. Now friends, for this question, you all must get the correct answer. And if not, then that is the indication that your understanding is really lacking and you really need to buckle up. For now, I will give you the correct answer and that is option C, on-demand availability of computer system resources, especially the data storage and computing power without direct active management by the user. Now let's jump on to the next question, question number 220 that says that you only want to manage application and data. Which type of cloud computing model should you use? Your options are option A on premises, option B infrastructure as a service also known as IAS, option C software as a service also known as SaaS and option D platform as a service also known as PaaS. And the correct answer for this question is option D platform as a service or PaaS. So in case you only want to manage the applications and the data, then PaaS platform is the cloud computing model that you should go for. And friends, again, I can tell you that this concept, these three concepts, infrastructure as a service, software as a service and platform as a service are essential core cloud computing concept, be it Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google GCP. The concept remains the same. So let me give you very brief about all these three concepts. Now coming to the infrastructure as a service, well, this is very ideal for the scenarios when you require high control and flexibility and you want to manage the operating system, application, data and security. 
you can think infrastructure as a service maybe like a rental of virtual data center where you can control each and every aspect of the same then coming to the software as a service or SaaS. so let me start this one with an example so you and me we all use gmail what is gmail well gmail is an example of software as a service this offers you ready-made application accessible through a web browser like we access the gmail or a mobile app and software as a service my friends this is very suitable for the businesses that needs readily available application with minimal setup time and also for the organization that are really seeking some subscription based solution for common business need for example crm or project management now coming to the platform as a service which is also the correct answer for this question well platform as a service that really focuses on application development so in this option the pass or the cloud provider it provides you with the platform and the tools and the and yes, infrastructure friends, to build the and deploy times, application so you can manage as a user you manage the application both the board, you can manage from the data Amazon, AWS, or maybe the security Microsoft. setting Azure. but and the not platform just that, itself also is handled by the cloud provider series, such the as Amazon series, AWS, such as on DP900 so in and case you're you also looking platform forward to prepare for these well, series, this then please the subscribe to the channel want and to press that bell icon so that you are getting the timely notifications the when we release the so latest you features on all, all these basic series. Core there is loads of, of cool computing. stuff coming up on the artificial intelligence as well. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.